For the latest COVID-19 news and updates, visit Hartford HealthCare's coronavirus website. And I've got Freddie Camillo, who's first selectman of my hometown of Greenwich. They both made the mistake of having a nice coffee with me this uh, weekend, and here they are. Um, let me just first just give you a brief update on uh, where we are over the last few days. I'll just go with this slide, because I think it's indicative of uh, what we've tried to do. Um, I think it's interesting. Hospitalizations were up a little bit yesterday. That was uh, just a tremor. I think it we're a strong, steady state, you'll see in a minute. Uh, fatalities, um, tragic, but heading down. And uh, the number of people who have been um, infected, I guess that's what, about 7%? Um, no, a little more than that for this, um, for this session, isn't it? Um, I thought it was interesting. You see 225,000 um, tests performed to date. Uh, we just uh, got off the phone with Vice President Pence and his uh, task force. Uh, you know, that includes uh, Deborah Burks, Mr. Fauci. That includes Secretary Azar. Uh, and they pointed out that um, now 50 states have tested at least 2 percent of their uh, population. Connecticut has tested about 6.5 percent of our population. And we're ramping up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we're not the champ by any means. Rhode Island is a champ uh, with about 12 percent uh, tested. But uh, we're, we're gaining on you, Gina. Um, I think you'll see that in terms of our um, positivity rate, uh, they pointed out to me that the average in the country is about 7.5 percent of those who test, test positive. And uh, we're about that over the last week, although we've been trending down uh, recently. The next slide just gives you an idea that our overall hospitalization is down about 65 percent for where we are, say, in mid-April, down 65 percent. And I think you see a fairly consistent line there, which is shared, I might add, with uh, most of our regional governors. Um, next slide, the testing overview, I think is, uh, again, indicative of the fact um, that little red blurb down there at the bottom, those are the folks who are tested a positive. Uh, but most importantly, you see that um, we're generally trending less than 10 percent. That puts us in the best of half of the states out there, and the trend is going uh, in a very positive direction. The next slide is just a reminder that, um, you know, I've gotten all the analysis from all of our different commissioners, the analysis from our reopen advisory board, and I put that together with a lot of help, by the way, in terms of our reopen report. And we're going to be releasing that, I think, within a couple of hours. And it just gives you our overview on, A, what our public health strategy is. We've gone over this uh, with key players. Our current activity and procedures, especially as regards our plans for testing, where we've been, where we're going, track and trace. The economic impact and analysis, which uh, is uh, so key. And finally, the reopening criteria themselves. Let me just stay on that slide for a minute, if I could. Um, the economic impact analysis and the reopening criteria. I was sort of interested, um, you know, Vice President Pence was just giving us an update on where Connecticut, where all the states stand against different metrics. He pointed out that um, 44 states now allow elective surgeries. Many of these surgeries have been put off, um, but now it's 44 states, almost all the states. It's worth remembering that Connecticut never um, stopped doing electric surgeries. At least, certainly, the governor never issued an EO to that effect. It was the, up to the hospitals. They made the determination when they started going back doing these elective surgeries. And um, I'm glad they did. And again, I remind people there's capacity. Don't put off these surgeries any longer. A lot of them sound elective, but they're really important to do. And I'd also remind you, go see your primary care doc. Vaccinations are down in this state and across the country, in part because folks sometimes don't feel comfortable seeing the doc. Now is the time to uh, do that. Now is the time to get your vaccination. And Dr. Fauci was pretty firm in terms of um, we may not know exactly when we're going to get a COVID vaccine, but we do know we're, we've got a flu vaccine and really strongly urge everybody do that uh, this fall. I was sort of interested, now we have 50 states that uh, allow curbside pickup for all the essential uh, businesses. We never stopped doing that here in Connecticut. 38 states so, um, uh, are now do all the personal care. You know, we started that, um, you know, uh, last week, and uh, now we're going to have the um, hair salons uh, later on this week, I think it is, and then we're going to finally do nails and um, 
and tattoo and the rest of that probably on uh, June 20th. So we're sort of in the middle when it comes to where our uh, regional and uh, nationally in terms of the personal um, care things. Restaurants. 37 states have opened up restaurants to one degree or another, most of them just for outside. So we're right um, uh, with our neighbors there. Uh, now, just 34 states have opened up non-essential services. Um, all of our non-essential services never closed. They mainly opened just for takeout until recently. And now all of our non-essential, those are stores on Main Street perhaps, uh, are open and uh, will continue to be open. Houses of worship, uh, the vice president pointed out, now 30 states allow um, houses of worship to be open, usually with real limitations in terms of capacity. Um, Connecticut, of course, never closed any of our houses of worship, although we did, we're pretty strict in terms of a, a number of people who could be there, say 50. And we're going to take a look at that over the course of the next week or so uh, and get back to you in terms of what we might be able to do there, both indoors and outdoors. Uh, the next slide is just some of the social guidelines, just a real reminder. And I, I had occasion to talk to um, you know, both Sherry and Freddie about this. I wanted to get an insight in terms of how we're doing around the state, how people are in terms of paying attention to the um, uh, social um, uh, guidelines that we put in place. And I heard from my you know, fellow governors, it, it's sort of all over the map. Um, some people are really paying close attention. Some are getting a little more uh, casual. Um, the stay home, stay safe for out at-risk individuals, more important than ever. Face masks and covering, um, I think we've been pretty good, maybe slipping a little bit, but pretty good. And Dr. Burks today just reminded us over and over again, there's nothing more important. And that's what's the uh, key to the social distancing. And I'll tell you, as we look around the world, um, you know, obviously South Korea, we know about their nightclubs opening and what that did in terms of the super spreader, why we've got to be cautious there. Brazil, they pointed out that uh, President Trump is going to start limiting um, visitors from Brazil. Brazil now has a higher infection rate than the United States of America. In a part, they have some very dense neighborhoods there. They call them flavella, and there um, it's a contagion, and it's serious. And uh, we're, we are in this together, including, um, including Brazil. We don't want that to come back and get us. Um, what else? I think the next slide sort of says it all. We are not the Ozarks, but this is uh, the Ozarks. I think it was in Arkansas. It was, uh, they had strict social um, distancing protocols in place for this outdoor uh, water park. But as you can see, um, some folks are uh, getting a, a little less responsible in terms of what's going on. I heard that from some of our other governors as well. I was talking to James Ravella, who is our public uh, safety, and I pointed out that in uh, Houston there were 500 citations for bars. <coughs> These are all reasons that we got to continue to be cautious if we can continue to reopen our uh, our great economy. You know, with that, let me just get some insights from two um, mayors right on the front lines, one from the southern part of the state, one from uh, right here in West Hartford. I'll start with Sherry Cantor. And Sherry, just love to hear your instincts as we opened up our stores, opened up our businesses, opened up our restaurants. What'd you see? Well, I, I saw a lot of uh, business owners that were very anxious <laughs> started uh, and bring back their customers and serve the people that they love, uh, as are the customers that so missed these uh, these places being uh, actively open. Many, many, many were working on takeout and things. But um, for the most part, uh, people are very, very respectful uh, and, and understanding of the situation that we need to socially distance and wearing face cloth face coverings. Uh, Governor, we were out to dinner at the Delamar Hotel on Friday night. Uh, we sat outside in a beautiful garden, uh, socially distanced to the waiters and waitresses all had face coverings, as did everybody coming in and going out of the of the restaurant. Uh, it was a really nice respite from a, from a very long pause, uh, and it felt so good to be out. And really uh, having us being able to talk to people about how much it meant for them to get out and go to one of their favorite places. Um, <laughs> 
Hoffman and I actually took a tour around the center and spoke to many restaurant owners who said this is, you know, it's kind of a gradual opening, but as we extend our outdoor eating capacity, with making sure that we're, we're safe with some of them are going to be sharing road with cars and we need to make sure those tables are safe, uh, that they're very excited to kind of re-envision and reimagine a new West Hartford with even more outdoor activity. We have a lot in town and we're excited uh, for that phase, but always with the caveat that we have to, have to, have to socially distance and wear face masks or face coverings or we're not going to be able to get to that next phase. And I that's a, such an important point that you raised. So uh, thank you. I, I, I think we'll, we'll take, continue to take our baby steps uh, and look at the data. Well, thank you, Sherry. It was nice to see you on Friday night, not in a Zoom uh, video conference. And Freddie, I'd love your point of view, and you may have a slightly different point of view because you're right on the border with New York, which has not opened up their restaurants even for outdoor dining. Yes, Governor, and first of all, I want to thank you for your leadership, your communication, and as always, your uh, willingness to uh, to listen to uh, different ideas about how we go about uh, reopening our state and doing so in a measured way. Um, as you saw the other day, uh, yesterday, um, you know, people are walking, a lot, lots have masks on and keeping distance, but some aren't. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes who's in a family unit and who's not. Um, we are on the front line. We are right near the original hot zone on the East Coast, uh, near Rochelle, about less than 15 minutes away, uh, surrounded by, uh, or, you know, next to some towns that have had been hit pretty hard. Um, so, but I think people are really are, uh, are ready to, to open up, even if they're being very, you know, uh, cautious as we, uh, as we partially reopen. But we're also looking at it here in Greenwich uh, as not only a partial reopening in the short term, we're looking how we could take this and, and extend it on a more permanent basis. So uh, whatever we do now is to get the economy up and running again. And, uh, and thank you for, for, you know, your ideas and, and for listening uh, to ideas yesterday about uh, what would help going forward. But we want to see how um, our town would look on the other side of this. Uh, what could we do right now? that would lay the groundwork for uh, a, a new Greenwich or a new, where we were yesterday, a new Greenwich Avenue. And to take that and to go to the various parts of our town, whether it's Costco, Byram, Old Greenwich, and see what we can do uh, there that would enhance our town on the other side of this. And it's this uh, tragic time has forced us to look at things to be a little bit more efficient and more effective. And as uh, the mayor was saying, to, to reimagine our town and our state uh, after this, and I think we're all we all have our eye on that. And uh, uh, and, and again, I agree with the mayor that um, we don't want to take any steps backwards. Uh, it's it's we've it's taken a lot to get us where we are right now, and we're we're very proud of that and happy. But we're uh, we're still in the middle of it, and we still want to keep our eye on the ball and our foot on the pedal and make sure that uh, we get to, through this um, uh, without taking any steps backwards. Well, thank you, Fred, and thank you, Sherry. You've both done a really thoughtful job of reopening uh, your town cities in a thoughtful way. And uh, they're going to both be stay here, so ask them some tough questions. Um, Max, back to you. NBC Connecticut. Governor, wanted to get your thoughts on the first phase of the reopening, how you feel it's going, if the state's received any complaints regarding compliance issues. Uh, some, but not a lot. I mean, uh, again, I, I, you see that picture of the Ozarks, and Connecticut was Connecticut smart, I think, this last weekend. Maybe the weather helped a little bit on Saturday, to be blunt. Uh, uh, I know that our parks, I know that our, our hiking trails were um, busy, I think probably twice the load they're used to uh, this time of the year. But people were responsible. We had to close down um, some of the parking once they got close to capacity. I think uh, this first five days of the reopening and this last busy weekend, we managed pretty well. And I think I heard that from uh, the mayors as well. And it also wanted to get your thoughts on outdoor in-person graduations. Massachusetts is allowing them um, for late July. New Jersey has announced that they're allowing them for early July. Any thoughts on that for Connecticut? Yeah, we said um, not during the month of June. Uh, we said it's too early. Um, and, and we're sticking to that. Uh, we also said we're going to take a look at July and August and give you some guidance on that pretty soon based upon um, all the metrics we described at length. Thank you.
News 12 Connecticut. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Uh, Governor, you know, talking about some of the things that you're still concerned about, where do casinos rank on that list right now? Uh, they're a concern. Um, as we heard on the um, uh, Vice President Pence's uh, team this morning, what they really see for this summer is the idea of flare-ups. We know about flare-ups in nursing homes and correctional facilities and meatpacking facilities. And we want to make sure that, uh, you know, when our casinos open, they do it in a very thoughtful and prudent way, does not put any of the people who are going there as customers at risk, does not put employees at risk, and does not put those, when they get back out to the general community, yeah. does not put the general yeah. community at risk. Trump. So we are talking to them, making sure that, um, you know, when they open, they do it in a very thoughtful way. I'm not sure I got all of your answer on that. I apologize. Um, so the discussions that you've had uh, with the tribes, where do they stand? And is the target date for them still the 1st of uh, June? I think uh, I'm afraid it is for them. It's still June 1st. But we had uh, Deirdre and David and Michelle. We were out there today. They were out there walking through, looking at the uh, protocols. They were responsive. We had some specific issues that we said uh, would definitely enhance the public um, health there in a dramatic way. So rather than me get back and forth in those discussions right now, let's see how it sorts out over the next couple of days. And really briefly for, for Josh, do we have a nursing home update? What's the status uh, in some of our homes right now? Sure. Well, the teams continue to conduct on-site inspections. We're now um, over 850 on-site inspections completed, both by our uh, DPH staff and our National Guard additional supports. Um, those uh, inspections continue to go well overall. Uh, issues have been identified. We've released the first round of findings and reports uh, last week. Uh, the numbers are trending in a, in a more positive direction. We continue to ramp up the testing in the nursing homes as well. So um, still, still a lot of work to be, to be done, um, but, but good progress overall. Fox 61. Governor, you mentioned that we should be getting this reopened before later today, but is there anything in there, new guidelines, that we haven't heard of yet? Um, no. I, I think it's a pretty good summary of a lot of what we've been discussing out loud with you and with the legislative leaders uh, over the course of the last uh, few weeks. And uh, I think you've heard Deirdre as well as Josh and Paul, you know, flesh out a lot of what this is. It puts it in one place, and you see our reasoning from start to finish. And then um, I see that you posted the picture of the Ozark. Is there any concerns? This was the first weekend for beaches, really good weather. Is there concern for beaches and too many people as the summer gets underway? Um, it's questions about uh, beaches, and I'm going to ask pass this over to Freddie in a second. But we were very careful on our beaches. You know, as you know, I was very happy that Rhode Island uh, opened up their beaches uh, for Memorial Day. Uh, for out-of-towners or out-of-staters, so to speak, we were able to limit them and charge a little bit extra. I think we were able to manage that. And what I've heard anecdotally is that um, people were pretty appropriate uh, on the beaches. Is that true, uh, Dad, at Todd's point, friend? Yes, it is, Governor. Um, we're right now, we just have opened it up to walking and trying to do putting arrows uh, to make sure that they're going in the, the uh, same direction and not crisscrossing each other. Um, but it's, as you know, Todd's presents some challenges um, uh, on the ingress and egress, and we have lots of different activities, whether they're walkers, hikers, bikers, strollers. Um, but as far as the sand part of the, the, the park goes, the, the actual laying out on the, on the sand, uh, we are developing a plan for that. We could <clears throat> be very, I guess, you know, in line with what you've uh, suggested, which is uh, no more than uh, groups of no more than five and spread out by about 15 feet. So what we have to do then is make sure that we have the proper monitoring in place. And so whether it's uh, parks and recreation monitors or uh, lifeguards or uh, some members of the GPD but we're, we, or some combination thereof, we will uh, make sure that uh, people can get out there and enjoy our beaches. And as you know, we have several of them and really uh, beautiful places to, to go and spend a, a summer day. But uh, we want to make sure people do so in a safe, safe manner. News 8. So for 
or Mayor Cantor, have you had to issue any warnings or summonses for people who are not following the rules? <clears throat> We have, we have had to talk to people. Um, the police are getting calls. Our health department are getting calls. Our health department is actually doing um, also sort of dropping and, and keeping an eye on things. So it's more of a recommendation and strong requests rather than uh, infractions or uh, any kind of enforcement. Um, we don't feel that that's the best way to go. Uh, we are going to be requiring, uh, we're actually you know, strongly recommending that everybody wear a face mask, uh, face covering in West Hartford Center. It is going to be hard, I think, at certain times to remain six feet apart. Uh, and for everyone's safety, that will be that will help us to maintain the quality and the outdoor uh, vibrancy that we, we think we can do in a very safe way. Is it pushback or more lack of education? Um, mostly it's lack of education or reminders. And sometimes, you know, it, like I, I like the uh, first selectman said, this is a lot of times it's a family unit and people don't think. There was actually a family of six sitting at a table um, outside eating on, fr on Friday night when I, I walked around. And you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know that they were a one family unit. Same thing with several people walking, four or five people walking together, even siblings. So um, it, it is more of a, a reminder and a uh, strong education rather and there hasn't been pushback we haven't we haven't seen it thank you and governor last question uh, president trump has recommended churches be back open again where where do churches stand in connecticut what will it look like and what are you recommending well of course our, our churches and houses of worship uh, never closed we did a, have a cap of 50 people uh there uh we're now in uh, good conversations with all the religious leaders, and we'll come out with some new protocols, um, you know, very soon. You know, obviously favoring outdoor worship services over indoor worship services and thinking about the capacity of the house of worship as we think about the number of people. Outdoors is so much safer, and seniors staying home is so much safer. Boceto Media. Hello, Governor. I, uh, can you give details on how is the state of Connecticut <laughs> implementing that $1.4 billion on the current crisis? <clears throat> yeah, the question is about the $1.4 billion in aid that Connecticut received from the federal government, the, uh, the CARES money. And uh, the first thing we did was um, we went to all of our towns and municipalities and we said, give us a, um, an itemization of all of your COVID-related expenses. And I think at the end of last week, uh, Melissa McCaw got the final um, inventory of that. You know, Josh is uh, busy compiling um, all of our COVID-related expenses here at the federal level, everything from social services to testing, as we put together what that $1.4 billion budget looks like. And I think Melissa ought to have that done the next week or so. Does that sound about right? That sounds exactly right. Well, we're going to see uh, this week, now that we received um, all the information from the municipalities, is you're going to see uh, basically a breakdown of funding that will be provided to municipalities uh, sometime later this week. In addition, for other additional funds, particularly the education funds, uh, the State Department of Education is putting together the framework and working with uh, the local school districts uh, and provided guidelines and information on that that will also be provided in the next coming weeks as well. So we are thoroughly working through and make sure that we are able to uh, utilize that funding, but the key is we have to make sure we're utilizing the funding in the most appropriate manner uh, as uh, provided by federal guidelines. And if, Governor, is there any uh, details that you can provide to further the public uh, health strategy to educate the community about uh, protecting themselves when they go out because it's still a lot of people are very stubborn to protect themselves and are risking the community. So what is the, the plans or the strategy with uh, the, the money that the federal government sent to uh, distribute it with the uh, municipalities and that way uh, educate the people about protecting themselves? Yeah, the question of course is about um some people a little casual about wearing uh, the facial mask and the such, and uh, we are. We're doing PSAs, public service announcements on that. Uh, we are being um, telling, reminding people every day the mask is not there just to protect you. It's there to protect everybody around you, there to protect the people you love. It, it's, a, it's a selfless act, and it's a really important act. 
And I think you heard from Freddie and Sherry and our own observations. So far, I think people are um, taking it seriously. There's some who aren't, and um, we're paying attention to that. My, my last question, uh, Governor, would be uh, yesterday, the Black and Puerto Rican caucus where legislators were protesting in different nursing homes. Um, they are asking you to press more, um, to put pressure on nursing homes that are not providing PPE equipment to their workers. Uh, what actions are you going to take? Uh, the question is about um, masks and gowns for the workers at the nursing homes. And um, they have the PPE. They have the masks and gowns. So we've been providing that to them all along. Maybe they provided some on their own, which would have been good. And, uh, and then we also had to provide training to make sure they used it in an appropriate way. Do um, you have anything to add on that, Josh? No, I, I think that's right. And also, uh, you know, there's been extensive continuing deliveries to the nursing homes of PPE, and there's also been federal deliveries to the nursing homes that have been occurring. So we do think they should be well stocked. Um, that said, we've observed through this crisis that when you have 215 nursing homes in this state, uh, on any given day there may be a small number who are not doing what they need to do, and, and that's why we're doing these on-site inspections. That's why we're taking disciplinary action where necessary. But overall, we think they're doing, uh, doing the right things. Thank you. WTIC 1080 News. Hi, Mr. Governor. I know you've been invited to tour uh, Foxwoods before their intended opening uh, next Monday. What's, what's the update on that situation? Well, I, I mentioned before that um, we had a team go out there today, walk through, um, I think it was Mohegan Sun to be exact. We haven't done Foxwoods yet. Um, I'm probably going to hold back. A, uh, 65 and older, I don't think it's appropriate to be going to these big, uh, large gatherings um, right now. And, uh, but I'm going to get a report back, and we're going to give uh, Mohegan Sun some you know, constructive uh, observations of what we saw as we try to get closer to a, a, a safe resolution to this. Uh, his team, uh, led by uh, the regulator uh, Michelle uh, Siegel of uh, Department of Consumer Protection, uh, DJ Gifford, who's the acting commissioner of Department of Public Health, and David Lehman, who's the commissioner of Department of Economic Community Development, who created the guidelines that we are working under under in, in the state in our retail restaurants. And you go down the line. He asked them to go there and basically do a thorough review, go through the plans with uh, each of the uh, tribal nations and their casinos, and to, and to really provide back to the governor feedback on it. Uh, so. Uh, that team has uh, visited Mohegan Sun today, and they will be um, visiting uh, Foxwoods at a later date. And so uh, the governor will have more details on where he stands based upon the review of those plans uh, by the commissioners presented to him. Is there any, does the governor have any, uh, well, if they decide to go ahead and don't approve, what's the, how does that look Sunday into Monday? If they decide to go ahead on June 1 and, and not take any of our, um, a suggestion in terms of how to do it on a more safe basis. Um, you know, I, I, I would warn people about that situation because a big, large congregate setting that attracts older people from all over the region um, is not good unless it's done right. And right now we're gonna do everything we can to make sure it's done right. Thank you. The Associated Press. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Governor, to follow up on that, do you foresee any situation where you think it would be okay for the casinos to open on June 1st? I think June 1st is too early. I think I've said that uh, pretty clearly. I can tell you that our um, neighboring governors all agree. But we're, uh, we're talking to a sovereign nation, and they have uh, you know, their, own, um, their own set of priorities there. But So we're trying to work this together. Uh, a, if I can get them delayed, even a couple weeks makes a world of difference. You know how long two weeks is in, in COVID years. And short of that, do everything we can to make sure they open it in the healthiest way possible. And sort of along those lines, do you think that Connecticut will have a uh, tourism campaign this year? Will we eventually be inviting people to come back to enjoy Connecticut this summer? Yeah, I think we will, um, Sue. I mean, uh, you, you saw that in our reopening plan, June 20 is the date we have in mind to reopen our hotels. Um, not earlier than that. 
uh, and that's going to be part of what we've done in terms of uh, Mystic and uh, some of the, the seaport and the aquariums and uh, opening up this state a little bit. Tourism is a key part of the state. Two months ago, we wanted to discourage travel in and out of the state. I think it's still too early right now. I think June 20 is a good date. But are you um, planning a uh, statewide tourism campaign this year? Uh, let me get back to you on the specifics of that with uh, David Lehman, but uh, we've got to remind people what a beautiful state this is. Okay, thank you. The Day of New London. Oh, hello, Governor. Um, one more question on the casino matter. Um, um, Based on the uh, the letter your commissioner Siegel sent to tribes last week uh, and pointed out that one clause in the compact, you you think the compact does give you some leverage to prevent the tribes from opening in defiance of of, of your wishes? Uh, and um, yeah, let me let me stop there. Is that so? I mean, if it comes to that, could you invoke something uh, in the compact to to prevent them from moving forward? Uh, that's not quite the way I see it. They've been good partners uh, for many years. Uh, they closed down voluntarily. Uh, we thought it was the right decision. They did it. They did it at considerable financial cost to themselves. They're eager to get open. They've got economic reasons for doing that, um, obviously. And we're trying to work carefully with them. Um, Michelle, in that letter, you know, involved alcohol. I noticed that the uh, casinos in California, as they're opening, most of them are voluntarily not going to be serving alcohol, at least to start off. Makes pretty good sense to me. I find free drinks is not great for social distancing. So you, you think that through your, your powers of persuasion, uh, you can get them to delay this uh, by a couple of weeks? That's still your hope? Either that or open it on a safer basis. I see. Thank you. Thank you. The Hartford Current. Uh, thanks, Max. Uh, Governor, continuing with the casinos, uh, you had briefly mentioned, I guess, last week, uh, something about revoking their liquor permits. Uh, under what circumstances would you revoke their liquor permits? Look, we're, we're looking at that. As I, as I said to the, um, you know, to the previous question, <clears throat> um, you're, you're serving drinks. You're inside. People have to take off their masks. They're doing a lot of lingering. It doesn't necessarily conduce to the social distancing. Uh, if you want to open up uh, your casino safely, I would put that off a little bit and allow, let's see how we can uh, manage this for the near term. So I would strongly recommend let's not do alcohol up front, just like uh, they voluntarily did in California. Can you also tell us about uh, if, if the casinos do open June 1st, and you were uh, said a second ago you'd like to push it off to the 20th, if they do open on June 1st, will you have uh, consumer protection officials there at the casinos watching the alcohol serving, and will you have public health officials watching social distancing and things of that nature? Um, I don't think it's going to come to that. Uh, we've got a, a good, strong relationship, and... Uh, and either will agree that serving alcohol on day one at the casino is a, not the right thing, and then um, the tribes will voluntarily police that themselves. They've got a lot of franchises in there, national companies. I think um, we all, all want to work together on this. And one last thing, uh, in the coming days and, and uh, weeks, tell us what you're going to be doing about contact tracing. Uh, there have been some concerns there about uh, staffing and training and things of that uh, nature. What uh, what will you be doing to speed that up? Contact tracing. Contact. You got that. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the project's very much on schedule. Uh, this is, you know, implementing a new uh, software uh, platform, which for those who have been part of that before, you know this is following a typical uh, pattern. You stand it up. You get people on board. We've now got almost 600 um, local health officials and volunteers uh, registered on the system. We've got nine local health departments using the system live to trace actual uh, contacts. Um, so they're making great progress, um, but, you know, people have ideas about enhancements you can make. We're working through those, uh, but the team's doing, doing a good job um, and, and very much making uh, the kind of progress that we need to have the robust 
uh, contact tracing infrastructure in place to support our municipalities to make sure that as we get into the summer and the case rates get low, that we have all of the infrastructure in place to track those contacts and make sure we stamp out any outbreaks before they spread so that we uh, try to avoid a rebound. CT okay. News Junkie. Thanks, Max. Um, Governor, what liability do child care providers or any business like a restaurant or even a hotel that's opening in the second phase have if a person contracts COVID-19 in their establishment? Yeah, Christine, I, I think we came out with a strict and clear set of protocols. And my instinct on this is that um, if the daycare provider, if that restaurant, um, uh, if that casino follow the strict set of protocols that we've established, that is a legal defense. Uh, if you don't, if you're sloppy, then there is no defense for that. Okay. And then um, what is the benchmark for holding off on phase two? What does um, the statistics have to look like on a daily basis for, to say, you know, hey, we got to delay phase two? Uh, all the lines that are going in the right direction start going in the wrong direction. Certainly hospitalizations, certainly COVID-related hospitalizations. If we see a number of flare-ups and we see infections picking up, um, not just in, a, um, say, a nursing home, but especially broadly in the population or in certain regions, we take a good hard look at a redirecting. I don't want that to happen. That's why we're opening now cautiously. Yeah, we, is there, we is included there a specific the, number on that? Yeah, we included specific metrics last Wednesday in the press conference um, talking about phase two, and that'll be in the re report uh, that we're releasing this evening as well. Okay, and then um, are you going to recommend that nursing homes test all of their staff? I think we're yes. testing all of their staff right now. We're testing every patient right now. Maybe the question is how often we do that? Yes, we are, we are recommending that. You're rec okay, so you're recommending. I knew that all patients were being tested. Uh, perhaps on a weekly basis, but all staff are being added to that? That is absolutely part of our strategy, focusing on the most at-risk populations, um, aligning where we're trying to focus from a state perspective on testing. These are private businesses, as you know, and so we, we're working with them to figure out the right way to get that to happen. Um, some uh, nursing home operators have already taken the initiative and have started doing that already. We applaud that. Um, but uh, we're, we're working to push the rest of them to ensure that that's uh, starting to happen more frequently. Is this happening in congregate care elsewhere in the state of Connecticut, like state-owned properties, Connecticut Valley Hospital? Um, the, the prisons, I know, are beginning to get tested. Um, how quickly is that rolling out? Yeah, that's uh, we've been ramping that up over the last uh, week, week and a half now as well. So we've been testing extensively in our prisons, both correctional officers and inmates. Uh, we've been testing at some of our Demas facilities. Uh, you mentioned CVH. We've been testing at CVH. Um, we've been expanding to other congregate uh, facilities. Again, the, the strategy here, and it's laid out in the report very clearly, the governor's talked about this in multiple other press conferences, is based on the public health guidelines where you have groups of people essentially living together in close quarters, um, those are the high-risk areas, and so that's consistently where the strategy is focused for repeated testing of people who may not have symptoms yet, but we know could be asymptomatic carriers. That's, uh, that's the major focus in the strategy. Thanks. Connecticut Mirror. Good afternoon. Governor, has Gina Raimondo uh, consulted with you since she spoke last week on the casino issue? She expressed serious reservations about the two tribal casinos opening and said that Rhode Island's casino would not be opening, you know, she said perhaps mid-June, perhaps July. So and any conversations there since uh, last Thursday yeah, or so? No, we, we have talked. and. Um, uh, she would like to see um, the openings put off at least till uh, mid-June. And uh, she said, if you can get um, your casinos in Connecticut to put off to mid-June, Rhode Island and Massachusetts could do the same. If your casinos, uh, Governor Lamont, want to jump ahead of everybody, even earlier than the Las Vegas casinos are opening, then uh, her strong feeling is that the other casinos would be sure to follow. So is there any action item on that uh, as to what the governors can do together to uh, put further pressure on the tribes? Uh, we've certainly talking in very clear way what those protocols are, how to do it safely, when we'd like you to open. Uh, that said, Paz, as you know, these are um, 
you know, sovereign nation. That's pointed out to me in the first uh, sentence of every conversation. And uh, so we got to work this out together. Uh, if people are really reluctant and we have smoking and drinking and 65-year-olds and, um, you know, maybe we have some um, friendly reminders to state police, you know, saying, hey, this is not safe right now. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to be able to work through this uh, collaboratively. And last thing, um, antibody testing now seems to be uh, pretty easy to get. Is that a mandatory report to the DPH for any test that shows somebody was positive for COVID antibodies? Yes, uh, antibody tests are, are reportable to DPH. And have you guys figured out what you're going to do with that data as far as trying to judge uh, how the reopening is going? Yeah, so the, the challenge there is that it's not a scientific sample, right? It's, it's people essentially either part of a research studies in some cases, or people can go and order them privately now, the antibody tests um, at labs. So we're trying to figure out what that data could be used for. We're also pursuing separately, um, uh, and we'll talk more about this uh, in the near future, it's mentioned in the report, but a, a more scientifically based um, survey, uh, antibody survey, um, that we're looking to conduct through the month of June to give us a more um, st statistically accurate view of what the, the, uh, the uh, infection rate has been in the state of Connecticut to this point. Thank you. Hearst Connecticut Media. Thanks, Max. Um, could I ask, uh, uh, this is Ken Dixon, could I ask uh, Fred and Sherry, um, what kind of, um, what are they telling their, their local restaurants that do not have outdoor dining? So uh, I'll, this is Mayor Cantor of Sherry Cantor. I, I will, um, Fred, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, sure. um, we, uh, many of them have been doing uh, takeout and might continue to do takeout. Some have uh, some uh, either public, they might have a, they might have a little lot in the back uh, with other uh, parking potentially on the road. We've looked at that. We are looking at all different options uh, for people, you know, places that don't have outdoor dining. And we are talking to the restaurants and say, asking what their vision is, what they would like to see, and how they think they would perform best. Uh, so we're taking in all those ideas and trying to accommodate all, 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 of, all the possible models that might work. Thank you. Ken, um, sorry there, getting phone calls. Uh, Ken, so I spoke to a few, but um, uh, not many in that regard. But um, we are exploring some possibilities where if there is uh, any establishment, whether it be retail or, or uh, a restaurant, um, if they don't have any outdoor dining capabilities, could we, as a municipality, uh, offer them some of our own space, whether it be a field or a parking lot, and do so without uh, exposure to the town when it comes to liability. And um, there seems to be uh, some room to, you know, there uh, some uh, possibility to do that. Uh, we're still going over everything with uh, all the stakeholders, including risk management here in, in town hall. So uh, we are, we want to offer the same opportunities to every small and local business uh, that those that have the outdoor dining capabilities and it just may take a little bit of creativity and uh, uh, I guess some some waivers <laughs> but uh, we certainly want everybody to to have the same chance at, at... Uh, thanks governor um, I, I'm under the impression that the Rhode Island's opening up indoor dining for 50 percent um, on June 1st uh, is, is this still kind of a moving target, this June 20th date for indoor dining or, or not? We have said uh, June 20th for indoor dining. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons, and, uh, and I'll ask, uh, you know, Freddie Camillo this. I mean, one reason is that, um, you know, New Yorkers, it's closed in Westchester County. It's closed in the Bronx. That's a half an hour drive. And uh, there's some thought that if we open um, everything up indoor as well as outdoor, a lot of traffic could be going back and forth. Or maybe, Freddie, we could ask uh, the, the local restaurants there to uh, prioritize reservations for Connecticut people. What's, what's your thought on that? Well, that is certainly a, a concern, Governor. Um, 
as we go around town every day walking and, and, and driving around, uh, we're seeing lots of New York plates. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all coming here to, to dine. Um, we are seeing lots of people from New York City who are now looking to rent here in Greenwich and possibly buy um, because of the space that it affords them uh, where this, maybe the city doesn't uh, uh, offer that. So it's hard to tell. And there also are Greenwich residents, as you know, that may have some cars that are registered in New York. So while we certainly don't know exactly each car, what they're doing here why, and why, um, it is a concern. And um, when we were go the first day we opened up um, on the 20th, as we walked Greenwich Avenue, we met quite a few people that had come over the border to, to grab something to eat, which we love. But again, we, we are um, going to have to keep an eye on that, especially with the limited capacity uh, going forward here, at least until we're on the other side of this. Um, Governor, could I ask you quickly um, whether uh, you've thought more about definitive dates for camps and summer school? Yeah, we have said, um, you know, outdoor day camps, uh, June 20th, June 21st, summer school, uh, probably uh, soon thereafter, you know, mid, later July. You say, why summer camps and not school, as we described before, one's outside, one's inside, a smaller group for the summer camps. And uh, summer camps will, if that goes well, that opens up for summer school. We want to get those kids back learning, not just waiting for September. Uh, how about sleepaway camps, Governor? Um, I think it's probably going to be too late. We're practically in a June now. In order for them to know that they can have a sleepaway camp in July or August, they need a, a clear determination from us now. And it's just too early for us to give them that clear determination. Thank you. Waterbury Republican American. Uh, thank you. Uh, Governor, um, I believe on Friday you and uh, Commissioner Lehman uh, in a talk with the Waterbury Regional Chamber um, talked about uh, a gradual reopening of state offices uh, after July 20th, I think was the date. Can uh, you and uh, Josh give us a little more uh, details on uh, when uh, state offices uh, might be reopening? Yeah, I'll, I'll start it off and then pass the baton, which is my want. Um, right now, our offices, like a lot of the other offices around the state, um, will be able to uh, reopen at 50 percent capacity. But our strong recommendation is if you can telecommute, telecommute a little bit longer. I think that that's in your best interest and our best interest. 